Don't you ever get tired of walking down the same old streets, day in and day out? <laughs> I know I do. I am constantly seeking change, trying to keep things fresh. Over the past few years, a movement has started picking up steam in New York and elsewhere in America that can make a walk down these same old streets turn into something completely new every day. I'm talking, of course, about food trucks. Hi, I'm Max Miller, and this is Skin Side Look. What do people even like about food trucks anyway? Let's go find out. What I like about food trucks, uh, portability, first of all. I mean, who doesn't want a food truck right now? Seriously, I would. I, I love food that moves, and it's the best. Um, uh, I like it because it's fast, easy. Uh, you can just walk down the street, grab something real quick if you're hungry. Where I work, I eat pizza every single day, so I love the, whenever a food truck sh shows up, it's like something different. It's new, I love the variety that these guys bring sometimes. I mean, this is, I think this is like Thai food, and I haven't had Thai food in a long time. It's usually cheap, it's quick. Yeah, the immediacy of it, I guess. I ordered it two minutes later, I was there. Um, could move around with it, I guess. The menus are pretty much simple, quick to order. Um, the food's done in less than five minutes, so no need to sit down and wait for a table and wait for your food. It's just pay and grab and sit down and eat. So it's pay and grab. Yeah, there you go. So I'm here at Carl's Steaks with its owner. Carl, what made you decide to get a food truck in the first place? Well, we've been in New York since 2003, so we've had two brick and mortar stores for the last 10 years. So we established a pretty good brand name. So you know, we had the foresight to see that it was just the biggest trend. What we did is we closed down our retail stores the rents have just been so high in Manhattan to do business is very tough. So we decided to venture out in the food truck world. I'm here at the Cinnamon Snail with its owner, Adam. Hello. Uh, but Adam, what made you decide to get a food truck in the first place? Um, so I had been working in vegetarian and vegan restaurants for years and um, I really wanted to bring this kind of food out to the street where people who you know, might have some stigma about coming into a vegan restaurant would be able to check it out. What's the process like to get a food, to get it from like the idea of let's have a food truck to actually getting the truck on the street? It's a lot. It's definitely a lot. It's a challenge. I'm building it out, buying whether you want to buy a used truck and then fabricate it from there or buy a brand new one and build it from scratch from nothing. There's a lot of process. Getting the permits not easy and then you have to pass inspection. So it's a, it's a process. It's like opening up a store but on wheels. How long did it take you guys? I'd say about a year. Wow. Yeah. We really sh started our first truck on the tightest, tightest budget. Um, my wife and I had saved up a really small amount of money and found this truck on Craigslist that was a highly abused, um, it was like a halal hot dog truck. A few friends of ours helped um, kind of gut everything out of it and one friend did some stainless work and one friend uh, helped us get some new refrigeration in it and some new plumbing. So when, when it hit the street the first day, we had spent about $20,000 on it. That's very low for food trucks. They, they typically cost people between you know, seventy dollars and $100,000 to start. How do you choose where to park every day? You're all over the city, right? Um, yeah, we every day we post on Facebook and Twitter by about 10 a.m. where we are every day. and We basically go off of customer requests or what the popular areas are in the city. We try to mix it up every day, where it's easiest to park, so to speak, and where the offices are where there's a lot of heavy foot traffic. So it's trial and error, and then once you get a spot, you try to repeat that every week so they know, all right, Carl's is going to be there on Friday, we're going to be there. See a familiar face, see a familiar truck. I know I'm here every Friday. Yeah, I mean, you're, you've been pretty frequent for the last six months as far as I know. Basically, a couple years ago when food trucks really exploded in New York, some areas that didn't want to have food trucks in them um, made some changes to the laws to make it so that food trucks can't really park anywhere legally in the city anymore and vend. Um, they resurrected this law from like the turn of the century that says you can't sell merchandise from a metered location. And they changed the definition of merchandise to include food so that now, even though we're fully licensed and permitted and everything like that, um, 
you know, when we go out on a given day, just by being open, we're breaking the law. Sometimes, like, while I've been in line for your truck, I've seen policemen putting tickets on your windows, and, and I think I asked you about it one time. You said, oh, that happens all the time. Can you, can you get a little bit more into, like... It's a daily thing. It's the cost of doing business. So instead of paying rent, you know, you're going to pay for, for a ticket. Uh, but parking tickets? It doesn't, you know, it's a, little, it's a little complicated. It doesn't guarantee you a spot, so they give you tickets on that. So you try to build relationships with the, with the tra traffic cops. They're always going to ticket you. You take this ticket, you smile, you pay it, you move on. The food trucks are, contain all of the headaches and nightmares of a restaurant, along with so many other things that restaurants don't have to deal with. Um, I can say that having worked in restaurants my whole life, um, you know, we're like a restaurant that gets parking tickets, that breaks down, that has the cops called on us, that has a generator which can fail, that has way more frequent and way more strict health inspections than regular restaurants. I mean, they really come on with a flashlight and look at the underside of your counter to make sure there's no buildup, like things they would never do in regular restaurants. If you were to say to someone at home, uh, what's the perfect cheesesteak to order from your truck, what would you say? What's the best combination of things? Me, personally, I'm a big uh, cheesesteak with cheese whiz, onions, and hot peppers, but it's everyone's preference. You know, as purists, they really don't put a lot on it as far as sauces and everything, but just you know, whiz with onions or hot peppers or provolone with onions. But you can't go wrong. I mean, everything that we serve is great. You know, from our fries to now we added different variations of fries, like bacon chili cheese fries, bacon chili fries, like every form you can get. So there's a lot of variety you can get. Well, me and both of my kids are really a big fan of the Korean barbecue seitan we serve on the truck. It's uh, seitan, which is, you know, it's wheat gluten that has this very meaty texture. And we grill it with a smoked chili sauce and it comes with uh, like a house-made kimchi we make with uh, heirloom radishes and Napa cabbage and marinated greens. And it goes on this chili butter grilled tortilla and it's freaking really yummy. And it's such a pleasing thing for people who really don't understand vegetarianism because it's it's really meaty, it's really spicy and savory and like exciting tasting. Oh, it's not the same. Let's talk about foods making me hungry. Let's get some dessert. I wait, I wait, my friend is late. I'm patient, but getting frustrated. Some girl said, suppose he's dead. And now this thought can't leave my head. A foggy day, a foggy mind. With thoughts like this get trapped inside. Well, I think it's time to dig into this food. This has been another episode of Skin Side Look. And I want to know, if you had your own food truck, what would you sell? What would it be called? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for all things skins. Max out. In most parts of the world, the drinking age is 18. That means an 18-year-old who's about to go off to school can celebrate by having a drink down at the pub. For us at 18 in America to have a drink, we have to ask our older brother to buy us some beer, or pay a stranger outside of a liquor store to buy us a 30 rack of Bush Light. All right, so we're here in front of the Freedom Tunnel in New York City. This, uh, in the late 80s and early 90s, was kind of like a shanty town.